Friends, hello. I'm very happy, pleased to be able to share this contribution uh, to this special period of Thy Kingdom Come, uh, when we pray for the coming of God's kingdom. And our theme this year is, is Better Together. It's a really good theme for us, I think, at, uh, at any time. But there is a really close connection between this theme of, of being united together as the body of Christ and being sent by our God uh, in mission. Jesus, of course, prays that his disciples may be one, that the church, uh, that the world rather, um, might believe. So there's a really, really close connection between those two. But I want to illustrate that point from somewhere rather different. In Acts 11.26, we are told that the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Now, why was that? Why did it happen at Antioch? Why was it at Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians? Well, I'm sure that it's to do with their very significant diversity. The church at Antioch, unlike the church at Jerusalem, was a very, very diverse community. It was diverse culturally. It was diverse ethnically. Now, by the time we get to the church in Antioch in, 11, in chapter 11 of, of, of Acts, it's quite clear that the church is not just a Jewish sect. Now it is a, a much more diverse body of people uh, than, than that. And, and by the time you get to this point, there was nothing else to call these people other than Christians because, and this is the key point, the only thing that they had in common now was that they were followers of Jesus Christ. It was following Jesus that gave them their fundamental identity. First and foremost, they were Christ people. It was Jesus alone they had in common, Jesus alone who gave them their common identity. And that's what people at Antioch recognised about them, and that's why they called them Christians, Christ people. And that led to something else. It's no coincidence that it was at this point, once they've discovered their fundamental identity and unity in Christ, in all their diversity, it's no coincidence that it was at this point that the spread of the gospel really begins with the commissioning of Paul and Barnabas and the launch of the amazing mission of the church that follows in Acts 13 and beyond. You see, once they realised that following Jesus was the only thing they had in common, then they realised that the good news of Jesus really was for absolutely everyone. Once they realised that following Jesus was the only thing they had in common, then they realised the good news of Jesus really was for absolutely everyone for people different from them, as well as people like them. And that's why at this point, with the Spirit's prompting, they're sent out on mission. So there is, I think, for us in the Church of God, a fundamental uh, connection between our diversity and our mission. That the more monochrome we are, the less effective we'll be. The more diverse we are, we're, the more effective we will be. So we need to embrace our diversity within the body of Christ, all of our, 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 our different denominations, certainly, and everything else that makes us uh, diverse uh, in, in, terms of, in terms of gender, in, in terms of culture, in terms of ethnicity. Because the more united we are in those, th those things across our diversity, the more committed, I believe, we will be to sharing the good news of Jesus with uh, absolutely um, everybody. And let's hold out for this great hope, too, that one day, the people who observe us as the body of Christ will see that above all else, and despite our weaknesses, and despite our frailties, despite our divisions, but in our increasing diversity, they will see that above all else, we are Christ people. We are Jesus people. Let's pray to, to that end. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge it is your will that your church should be one that the world might believe. So help us, we pray, together as your church, committed to seeing your kingdom come, to seek uh, the unity of the church, to embrace our, our bewildering diversity, to see that not as a challenge or a threat, but a gift. And as we embrace one another in all that diversity, may we be better equipped, better enabled, uh, with a deeper conviction that our task is to embrace the whole wide world 
uh, those who are distant from us and different to us, as well as those who are near to us and like us, to embrace them all with the good news of your coming kingdom. So, Lord, help us and equip us. To that end, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, and may God bless you this season of Thy Kingdom Come. Goodbye.